It is gear mod time. Let's go. I love these videos because I can just stay indoors and be lazy with my filming. <laughs> I don't have to actually go outdoors and film and it's cold outside. Today, we're going to be modding the popular Alnergy C9111. Actually, I'm not too sure how popular it is, but at least on my channel, my review of this backpack is one of my most viewed videos. Please watch that review if you want to know more about this backpack. This gear mod video, I'm going to be trying to make this backpack as light as possible by eliminating features I do not need. I'm also going to change a few things, but my goal of this video is to make this the best fast pack and pack possible. There are going to be mods that will require a sewing machine. However, there will also be mods that do not require a sewing machine. So I definitely recommend you to watch this whole video. Now, starting as is with the backpack, the uh, pad and the waist strap, the backpack weighs 21.7 ounces. Without the waist strap, without the back pad, it comes in at 17 ounces, okay? I'm not sure how much weight I'm going to be able to save. I want to save like one ounce. I think that's doable. Let's see. But first, we're going to start with the easy mods. Let's take a look. Okay, starting off with the simplest mod, I'm going to be trimming the excess strap material. The straps on this backpack do come uh, fairly long because they want this backpack to fit a wide variety of different sizes. However, I definitely don't need it this long. I would recommend trying on the backpack when you have your layers on. You know, if you're ever going to bring this backpack in the winter, you know, make sure you put your down jacket on, your shell layer or whatever. Try it on, adjust it. So that way, you know the maximum length you need for these straps. I already have a good idea of how much I need, so I'm just going to cut it about, eh, let's say right there, okay? Now I'm going to bring that on the other side, measure it out, just because I want it to be kind of even, and cut it right here. <clears throat> okay. So if you do have a sewing machine, you can sew the edge of this, so that way this strap does not fray, and you can also fold it over on itself, so that way this strap won't slide through here. It's very unlikely that it will slide through here. Um, I'm just gonna make it simple. I'm gonna take a lighter and burn the edge. So that way the material does not fray. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, and that side is good as well. You can just leave the edge just like this. This is not going to loosen on itself. However, for the purposes of this video, I will be showing you how to make it so this strap won't go through this buckle. I'm going to be using heat shrink tubing and some Gorilla Glue, super glue. The really simple way would be to just add some super glue and just fold it in on itself, just like this. As long as the material is uh, folded on itself, it won't go through the strap. So let me just do that right now. Okay, and you can see it's not going through. You can just leave it as that. You don't have to do anything extra. However, I'm going to be fancy. I've got some heat shrink tubing. You'll find a piece that fits. Mm. Oh yeah, this piece is a good fit, okay. And cut a piece that will cover it. Wrap the heat shrink tubing over. This will just make it look necessary. I mean, this is really not necessary at all. I mean, it, will, it will make the glue, I guess, a little bit more secure, so it won't undo, but even if it undoes, it's not going to be a big deal. You can just glue it again. Okay, and I've got a heat gun over here. Now this angle is a little bit weird, but we can make it work. Let's make sure it's on properly, okay. okay. And you can see the heat shrink tubing. 
fit really well over the strap and yeah that's not going anywhere let's test that again yep solid next up we're going to be replacing the side compression cordage which is elastic with a static cord that does not stretch i have some extra cordage here i think i just got this uh with one of my tents so what you want to do is first untie one side and you want to make sure you do this one side at a time so that way um, when you have one side untied you can reference the other side on how to feed the cordage back in the proper way you also want to make sure that the cordage you're using is not too thin because if it's too thin then it won't be able to have enough friction to go through this toggle right here okay but let me just undo this elastic okay and now that you have undo the elastic cordage you want to take the cordage you want to use measure it out you can see I already measured mine out so I already know what length I want it to be and then just simply string it back uh, through the loops again if you forgot the sequence of how to string the cordage just make sure you reference the other side Feeding the string back through this uh, tunnel right here may be a little bit tricky. Last time I was able to do it by hand, however, um, because it's annoying, I'm just going to use this tool. If you don't have a tool, you can simply tape this piece of string to like a pen and just feed the pen through this loop. Okay, all set. Let's see, let's try it out. It's tightened. And loose end. Nice, works perfectly. Okay, next up, we're going to be cutting some things. Firstly, I'm gonna cut these off. These are um, ice axe loops. I don't really need them, so snip and snip secondly there's this pocket right here uh, although useful i don't really use this pocket um, i'm sure other people can find uses but i find it uh, unnecessary so i'm gonna flip this back i'm gonna turn this back inside out i'm gonna cut that pocket out as well as the water bladder pocket all right let's turn this inside out so this section right here, this black section, that's the zippered pocket that I just showed you. I'm going to carefully just cut out this material because I do not use this pocket. Gosh, is that sweat? What is that mold? What is that? I think that's sweat. Oh, that's gross. I need to wash this pack. <laughs> That's nasty. Oh my god. Look at this. There's like... 
what are those like salt crystals i can season my dinner with this should i try it no i'm kidding <laughs> that's nasty Okay, that's one pocket cut off. Now I'm gonna cut the the water bladder pocket. Actually, I can use this for something later on. Ooh, this is good. This is good. This is really good. Actually, I'm excited. You you'll see that later. I can reuse this for another part of this bag. Um, uh, it will require a sewing machine, however. You will see. Oh, shit. my pack has a hole. What the? Fuck? I didn't even realize that. Oh, okay, the hole doesn't go through. Interesting. But that should still be repaired. I don't want it to get worse. Okay. okay. But yeah, definitely, I'm gonna use this for another part of the pack. Um, so hold on to this if you plan to do any sewing modifications. Uh, I'm gonna cut this strap off. This strap holds the water bladder. Don't need that. Okay, so that concludes all of the modifications you can do without a sewing machine. Um, actually, there is one more that I forgot to mention that I'm not going to do, however, you can do. That is removing all the logos. Uh, if you take acetone, now I tried this before. If you take acetone, nail polish remover, you can actually scrub these logos off. So that way your backpack can be look really cool and unbranded. Um, I'm not going to do that just because I'm lazy and I don't care, but you can do that if you want to. Okay, I'm going to cut out one more part actually. Um, I'm going to cut out this section. This is the pocket where the, the frame goes. I don't use a frame. Sometimes I would put a sit pad in here. However, having a full-on dedicated pocket, I don't feel it's totally necessary because I can just put my sit pad against the back. You know, I don't need a pocket holding it in place. So this hole only goes through this uh, green material. It doesn't actually go through the black mesh. So um, I'm just kind of lazy and I, I don't really want to fix the hole. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let me just cut the whole thing out. My biggest concern, actually, I'm not too worried about the durability because, I mean, I've already been using this bag for a really long time and this mat black material, which is actually fairly thick, has been rubbing against my back the whole time and there weren't any holes. There was a hole in that green material, however, this black material didn't have any holes. Um, one thing you should be concerned about is that condensation can pass through this. It's not a concern for me because I always make sure to put my items in a pack liner. However, just note that the condensation from your back can easily travel through this and affect whatever items are on the inside. I forgot another mod that I could do. That is removing these Velcro attachment points at the top of the roll top of the bag. I don't like these because sometimes if I'm wearing certain uh, fleece, sweaters for example alpha direct that material it would stick to this velcro and it would catch my sweater so i'm just going to remove them as i was removing them though as you can see here i accidentally went through the material and exposed this plastic part that gives the top of the road top structure and that gave me a great idea how about i just remove this whole plastic part the plastic part makes it easier to roll the top of the pack. However, 
it's not 100% necessary. Even if I didn't have this plastic part, you could still obviously roll the top, okay? So I figured, let's just remove this whole plastic. Let's remove this whole plastic part and let's remove the um, uh, Velcro. I'm going to be using some scissors and a seam ripper. Now, hopefully this won't require any sewing, um, but I'll tell you if it does or if it does not. Oh, that's stuck on pretty good. Let me cut this off. You don't even need to use a seam ripper here. If you have um, scissors, you can just use scissors or a knife. Okay, that's one side done. Let's do the other side. Uh-oh, I've got a rip. Taking out this plastic part at the top of the roll top really was a bad idea. Um, to be honest, I should have been more careful with my seam ripper. So you can see this line right here is the seam ripper. Uh, when I went down right here, I did affect this stitch line. Okay, this is the stitch line that holds this green fabric to the black. And when I went down with this, the seam ripper, I basically hit the stitch line. And that's why this part is failing. Um, this part is failing as well because you can see you see this is where I cut it with the seam ripper and if I pull on this yeah oh there we go <laughs> that was stupid of me uh, I'm going to repair this it shouldn't be too bad but yeah don't do this mod and if you are gonna do this mod just make sure you you rip it in the middle rather than the bottom with the stitches I'm not sure well, I don't even know why I did that okay I've done most of the no sewing required mods um, i'm sure if you really wanted to you can find like a few more things to snip off however right now i'm satisfied with where the pack is i am shocked that we've saved 2.5 ounces my like understanding on how, of how much an ounce is must be like really really uh bad because i thought i was gonna save one ounce for this project as a whole however we're not even halfway there actually maybe we're like halfway there and we've already saved 2.5 ounces now let's move on to some of the mods that require a sewing machine for the sewing mods i'm going to first start by removing this side zipper on the side of the pack the reason why i'm going to be removing this is because i never use this I believe by removing it, I'm going to save some weight as well as potentially save this bag from having a point of failure because I believe having a stitch here would be more secure than having this zipper here. I'm going to cut out the zipper first, then I will sew it back together. Move your head! Okay, so now I just need to sew these two parts together. I'm going to flip the bag inside out. And now that the bag is inside out with my sewing machine, I'm just, just going to line this up as the best I can and sew these two pieces together. Uh, I will pin it first not pin, but actually I'll use these clips to clip it first. This section may be a little difficult. This is the section where the strap is. Um, yeah, like the shoulder strap is right here. That's a huge noggin. It's a virtual planetoid. Has its own weather system. I'm going to make sure 
I'm going to need to make sure that I uh, add a lot of uh, stitching to reinforce this area. Now that I have it all clipped, let's start sewing. Okay. It's getting caught. I'm just gonna use my hand to help, help get it going. There we go. Okay, I'm getting to the shoulder strap. Um, to be honest, this will be a little bit difficult. I'm actually going to end this stitch right here. Uh, and I'm going to adjust it so the needle, uh, the needle, right now I have it centered. Let me show you guys. Right now I have the needle centered. I'm gonna make it so the needle is on the far left corner. That way it should be slightly easier to um, slightly easier to sew the strap section. There we go. Okay, I just finished uh, sewing the whole side closed. Uh, I already turned it inside out. It looks good. I'll show you guys in a second. However, I'm going to complete this by doing a zigzag so that way this doesn't fray. I'm also going to go over the uh, shoulder strap area a few times just to make sure it's solid. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go through the whole thing one more time with another stitch just to make sure it's uh, as solid as possible. The zigzag stitch is done. It honestly looks like shit. <laughs> but thankfully this is on the inside and we don't see this. So let's flip it right side out and you will see that the outside also kind of looks like shit. well that's mostly because i messed up right here uh the i wasn't holding the material taut uh, and it got caught right here i can redo this if i really wanted to just use the seam ripper to undo these seams um but i'm lazy i don't think it's that big of a deal aesthetically it just looks a little bad but functionally this is still really strong and it's not going to affect the bag in any way other than looking like shit. but yeah that's the side zipper done i'm going to now remove this zipper and just i already removed the pocket as you can see this you know what i just realized maybe i'll keep this zipper actually if i keep this zipper this can work as like a, a quick access pocket to the inside of the bag. I've packed up the bag just to see how everything looks and how everything feels. It looks great. It feels great. The compression straps are working well. The reason why I'm deciding to keep this versus the side zipper, which also works as a quick access zipper, is because I found that the side zipper was a lot harder to uh, zip closed once open versus this one that's near the top I think just due to the construction of packs and how much force is pushing on certain areas this top pocket isn't under as much force and because of that it's easier to open and close versus the side zipper was fairly easy to open but it was difficult to close so I'm going to keep this zipper the last mod I'm going to do is I'm going to add this piece of material which was the hydration ladder pack 
pocket, which was, can also be used as a laptop pocket. And I'm going to sew it onto the bottom of the pack, just like this. So that way I have a bottom stash pocket. Now this mod is obviously going to add a little bit of weight. However, personally, I think it's worth it because I really like the idea of having a pocket down here. It's great for if you want to store a windbreaker, some gloves, uh, a neck gaiter, etc. So let's add this. Here's the plan. I'm going to measure out the uh, length and width of this rectangle, which is the bottom of the pack. And then once I know that measurement, I'm going to cut out that rectangle on this piece of fabric. However, I'll leave roughly, um, let's say one centimeter. Yeah, I think one centimeter, maybe like half a centimeter on each side. That way I can fold over the fabric like this. All right, so let's get this measured and I'll go cut this. It is nine inches. Okay, now that I have it cut out, I'm going to sew this over and onto itself. That way I can have a clean um, edge. Screw the clips. I'm just going to freehand it. Okay, that's one side done. Now time to do uh, the other two sides. For the positioning on the pack, I want it to open on the left side, so that way I can reach it with my left hand because um, that's just what I prefer. I'm right hand dominant, so I want my right hand to be free. Unfortunately, my phone died when I was filming the sewing portion of this bottom pocket. However, let me quickly explain what I did. The, I started with this section. This is the part that touches your back, okay? And the reason I started with this section is because there was already a lip. You can see this, uh, this like lip, this seam. I don't know what you call this, but I sewed the black portion directly to this lip, okay? Then I started the side. The side didn't have a lip, so what I ended up doing is I took the backpack material and simply folded it in on itself like this and sewed the black pocket directly to that. I did the same thing with the other side. Here you can probably see it better. I folded it in on itself and sewed the black to it directly. This side is at a slight angle. The reason why I did that is so that the opening is slightly larger, so that way I can fit my hand in. Now, you guys may not be able to tell. Actually, let me bring it close. Let me bring it closer so you can tell. Yeah, it's, it's really fucking ugly. Like, what is going on here? I do not know what's going on. It's really fucking ugly. I mean, even for me and my standards, it's ugly. I really should have used the black thread, but whatever, it's functional. This is not Project One Way. I see a problem. And I'm really happy with how it turned out because uh, I was gonna throw this away, you know? I was just gonna throw this away, but I'm glad I was able to reuse this and <laughs> reuse it for something that is really helpful. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that this video is already 30 minutes long. I will try to make this outro as quick as possible. If you guys have found that this video is helpful and have enjoyed, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know what to do. I am very, very satisfied with the mods I've done. I am really shocked that we were able to bring the pack down to about 14.6 ounces. If you compare that with other top tier fast packs, it really 
is in line with those. For example, the Nashville Cutaway and the Polanti Joey are also about 14 ounces. However, those packs are triple if not quadruple the price. That's amazing. And yeah, I'm really happy. And I hope you guys enjoyed as well. So let me quickly go over some of the things that I would recommend for you in the future if you're going to be doing these mods. Firstly, I would not recommend removing the plastic uh, part at the top of the roll top just because that plastic only saves you 0.2 ounces and it's kind of a pain to remove. I'd say just remove the velcro, don't remove the plastic unless you have a sewing machine and you really want to get into that. Um, when you are removing the side zipper on the side of the pack, make sure to give yourself enough clearance so when you sew it back together, you have enough material. Be careful when cutting out the velcro because if you saw what I did, I accidentally cut it too low and I hit one of the stitch seams and that required me to go back with a sewing machine and fix that. Make the bottom pocket larger than you may expect. Um, I made mine 9 by 8. I should have made mine like 9 by 9 and made mine a little bit larger just because once you have a lot of items at the bottom of the pack, you know, like your sleeping bag or sleeping quilt, because that's usually at the bottom, it will fill up that area and it will be tight. Um, the bottom will be tight if the material is small. So give, give yourself more material than you think. And lastly, don't cut your straps too short, specifically the shoulder straps. My straps still fit, but the issue comes when if I do want to tighten the straps, because I cut mine short, it's hard to really reach the straps and get a good grip on it to tighten it. So I'd say give yourself like at least an extra five inches just so if you do need to tighten the strap, you can really grab it and tighten it. Also, another reason why you may want to have long straps is, a viewer mentioned this actually, their name Phil and Mini Phil, so shout out to you. If you have items on the side pockets of your pack and you have trouble reaching them with your arms, they recommend you just simply loosen the shoulder straps that way the pack will lower and you can reach whatever's on the side. Typically a water bottle, you can drink the water bottle, put it back and tighten the pack again. I think this is a great idea for me personally. I don't need that just because I always have my water bottles on the chest pockets. But if you do have your water bottles on the side pockets, you may want to consider leaving the straps long. Those are all the mods I have for you today. If there's any that I have missed, please share in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and happy trails.